Hi and welcome to another video by me, Joe Unwin, also known as Flow Joe. Today we are looking at Power Automate Desktop and we're looking at how we can get the first and the last day of the current month. Now, why would we be doing this? Well, let's say you are in a month of March and you want to know how many days there are in the month and you've got the current date. Well, today it is the 8th of March. Now, how do I know how many days there are in March and how many more days there are going to be in March? Well, I need the day at the end of the month. And that could be the 28th, the 29th, the 30th or the 31st. So how do I get the end date? That is the important part of this video. How do you get the end date? Now getting the start date is really easy. You simply get the current date as you can see on your screen here. Then you get the month. So you do convert date time to text. You pass in the MM to get the month, as you can see here, um, because you're using the format of custom. So you pass in the current date, custom, then capital M's, MM, and it will give you the start month. And then you do exactly the same, but instead you do three small lowercase uh, wise and you'll get the year and then you simply set a variable of start date and you do the month slash one slash start year and that will give you the first of the month that you're currently in and then the start year but how do we then move from there to get the last day of the month well there is a very simple trick that you can use to do this and all it does is it adds a month and then subtracts a day. Because we're on the first of the month, in this case we'll be on the first of March 2024, if we add one month, so we do the start date plus a month, so we simply add to date time, we pass in the start date, we pass in one month that we're going to be adding, we select the time unit of months and then we get a resulted date which will be a month in advance. So then we'll be on the 1st of April. So now in the resulted date we would have the 1st of April and then from that resulted date if we minus one day we will then be at the last day of March. So you do add to date time but this time you pass the resulted date through, so the one that's now got an additional month on, then you do minus one in the add days. You can do plus some positive numbers, but you can actually do negative, so your minus number. So if you do minus one days and select the time unit as days, that is going to give you the last day of the month. But what that's going to do is it's going to give you the date but it's also going to give you a timestamp on there as well so what we can do then is we can convert that date and time to text so pass in the last day of month and then just um, pass in the format use of standard and do a short time uh, short date sorry and then you'll remove that time so then you'll have the formatted last date and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply uh, pass that into a file at the location here and then write to the text of this is the first day of the month and this is the last day of the month. So if I run this now, we're going to see how that exactly works and see if there are any problems and see what the results are. Okay, so there's quite a few variables that get put out. So what I would recommend doing, if you're thinking about going down this path, to work out the first date and the last date, or if you're just, you're, you're just trying to work out the last date of the month or anything like that, split it out into a subflow because there's quite a lot of actions that run and you don't want it to clog up your main uh, flow. So create a subflow called get date or get last day or something like that, whatever you want to do um, and just have it run there. But then you can see the variables that are produced. So the current date, I've got it set to just give me the date uh, only, not the time. So I've got a timestamp on there. So current date is uh, the 8th of March. I've got my file path and then I've got formatted last date. So as you can see here, I've got the 31st of March 
2024. And that is what we're aiming for. We're aiming for the last day of March. And we've done that by simply taking the month slash one to get the first slash year, adding a month on. So we're in the first of April and then minus in one day so that we end up with the last day of the month. But what we ended up with was we ended up with this, which was the last day of the month with a timestamp. So what we did was we formatted that by simply converting date and time to text and then using the standard uh, short date to remove the timestamp. And then we've obviously got our start date and then we've got our start month and start year, which you use to create that initial thing. So let's open up the file and see what we've got. So here we've got first day of the month. Okay, so the 1st of March 2024, 1st of the month. And then the last day of the month, we've got the 31st of March 2024. So now what we can do is we can actually do calculations of how many days there are left from the current date if we wanted to. We could um, always know when to send out a specific uh, document. Uh, we could always know when to uh, write a specific thing into a log. If it's the last day of the month, we can know, okay, well, we need to close off this log now and send it off to someone, send an email to someone. There's many use cases for knowing the last day of the month because more often than not, when you're working with customers on the last day of the month, they want to do something. They either want to, like I said, make a log, they want to wrap up a file, they want to create something, they want to notify someone of something that has happened. And this is how easy it is to actually do it in Power Automate Desktop. You simply get the current date and time, you split out the month and the year, you put it in between the month slash day slash year and where the day is you simply put one you add a month to that then you minus a day from that and that is how you can easily get the last day of the month now it is always going to be in that format it's important to remember it's always going to be month then day then year now, if you're uh, somewhere from somewhere like the UK, where I'm originally from, um, like we have different ways of doing the date. Sometimes you have the year, month, day. Sometimes you have the day, month, year. But with Power Automate Desktop, you need to remember that you're going to be working with the start of the month, then the start um, of the day, and then the start of the year. So it's always going to go month, day, year. So when you're doing this, just keep that in mind. But that is how you can easily get the last day of a month as well as the first day of a month in Power Automate Desktop. I hope that helps. I hope that you've kept with me to the uh, end of this video. And if you have any questions at all, just leave a comment below, hit that like and subscribe button to help the channel grow. And I'll see you next time on another Power Automate Desktop video. Bye.